Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is the Epistle Lesson. Evidently, over 200 people have been accused of assassinating President John F. Kennedy. That's quite a large number. Conspiracies are easy to latch on to because it, the simple explanation sometimes doesn't give a full account. Just like when an airplane might go missing and vanish without a trace. The truth is not always obvious. It's not what everyone believes. And this is actually biblical. There's a big mystery hinted at. Lots of people think there's a mystery in the world, but usually it's political. No, here we have a mystery in the Bible, and the mystery is revealed in Jesus Christ. Paul is called from his pharisaical ways to uncover this mystery of God to the Gentiles, to us. The mystery that Jesus' death opens up the way to God so that we can be sure of God and know his will and his love for us. I believe in God is actually a pretty worthless statement. It says nothing about which God or what that God is like. The point of Christianity is not the existence of God. That's a philosophical question. No, it's not enough to know there is one out there. Rather, it is Christian to say that my God, Jesus, suffered for my sins, and he gives me life and forgiveness. The words are simple, but this explains the mystery. They can only be known in the gospel. For Christ himself speaks to us in scripture to win us for himself. For anyone can know of God and his power, that's evident in nature. But the real Christian question is, what does God think of me, not what do I think of God? To know that God loves me and he justifies me is a very Christian statement. The mystery of God is that he planned salvation out of his deep love for everyone in the whole world. This mystery is that the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, partakers of the promise of Jesus Christ, through the gospel. This news of Jesus is life giving. It restores us to the Lord and actually imparts forgiveness to us. It's not just a saying or words or information. No, God reveals himself in the gospel so that we know God as Father, not an abstraction, not an idea. And we become his children. And this explains everything in the world to some extent. For this is the great mystery that our hearts were searching for. And now we have it. The unbeliever says there are lots of random events. There are lots of bad things that happen and suffering we must go through and it's all pointless. There's no reason. But we have a reason to hope for we know Christ. There is a bigger plan than the things that we can see. And this mystery is uncovered in Christ. Maybe not to our reason satisfaction, but to God's satisfaction. And we are simply his children who trust that he is good to us. The gospel is God's final word to mankind. It reveals his heart and it creates faith in us. But our flesh, it hates the gospel because it does not love God, nor can it keep his commands. And so we cannot be convinced of the gospel unless the Holy Spirit moves us to believe. And that's why Jesus was rejected when he came. The majority of Jews wanted a better king, a better mystery, not the bloody Jesus, whose throne was the cross. But we know that our sins demand blood. They truly anger God. But in the blood of Jesus, we find relief. We find comfort. No one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Spirit. 
And here we have the gospel. No one applies it to himself. The Spirit is the one who teaches it to our hearts. This is not book knowledge. This is not gained by experience. No, your Father in heaven gave it to you. And this is how he calls you into Christ, to be part of Christ. He tells you the good news that the Son of God kept the law for you. And so God is no longer a mystery. He's no longer a question mark. No, you were part of his plan from the beginning. For he wanted to join you to Christ. To make you new in the washing of water with the word. So don't think you're in the dark. Don't be in despair. For Christ came to give you true knowledge, knowledge of himself. For God's Son, who died for sins, rose for your justification. So there is no doubt or mystery about God's heart. You have his promise that God is for you. For Jesus is the one, risen from the dead, who lives for you right now. The problem is that we often go beyond his word. We are not content with the gospel revelation. We are tempted even to put words in his mouth and make the gospel a little better in our eyes. <coughs> Evil things can seem very attractive to us. It can seem very natural to our flesh. And we often think, well, God must be speaking to me because it's easy. And if what I want can come easy, then perhaps it is God's will. Even though we are ignoring God, we see this a lot of times with temptation to sexual sin. The world says, indulge the flesh for it feels good. But God does not speak through your feelings, he speaks through Jesus Christ. Yes, it could be someone speaking to you, but it is not God. Perhaps Satan. For what does God teach? He gives us the Spirit to lead us into righteousness and endurance and suffering. Not to take the wide path, but the narrow one. And God's will becomes the most important thing in our lives. For your God speaks to you in the gospel. Listen to no other word. Christ does not give us free reign to do what we want. No, he calls us not to gratify the flesh, but to put it to death. This is not fun. This does not feel good. But he leads us gently with his word and comforts us in our afflictions. God speaks to us in Christ. But he does not speak to us outside of Christ and the Holy Scriptures. He is the full revelation of God. We do not expect more mysteries to be revealed on earth. There are many things we would like to know. We will wait till heaven, for we have all knowledge of God. Jesus did not come to empower us to make up God's will. No, he didn't say, here are the keys to the car, go have fun. No, instead he gave us the keys to the kingdom of heaven. The power to forgive sins of those who are repentant. And to not forgive sins of those who are not repentant. This unlocks heaven itself. But the sinful nature likes to play God. Likes to decide for him what is right and wrong. And that's why we focus. And we must be brought to Jesus and his teaching. The one who lived and died for us. In him we have life. As we face our little crosses. We realize these bring us closer to Jesus. Suffering is not a mystery anymore. In Jesus Christ who suffered for us. And what does God say to you? The Father loves those he disciplines. So do not try to improve the mystery. Do not try to make it better. Were you called to do something? Well, you were called first of all to believe. God calls through Christ, not through natural gifts or feelings. No, he calls through Christ in your baptism. And we live in this freedom. We don't have to justify everything we do in the name of Christ. No, we can have talents that we simply use to the best of our ability. 
and as we see fit. As long as we are not loving sin or disobeying Scripture, we can exercise our bodily talents as we see fit. And we look ultimately to how God made us. We look to biology, our roles as male and female, as mother and father, to find out how we should live in this world. For God chose your gender, it is not us who choose it, and he wants us to honor that with how we live our lives, to see his work as holy. For God does not make mistakes. There is really only one spiritual calling, though we all do different things in the body of Christ in this world. Paul had a true calling. Christ spoke to him directly. He speaks to us through the gospel. You have heard of the stewardship of God's grace that was given to me for you, how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I have written briefly. Paul hated Christ. He imprisoned those who believed in him. But yet he was given an earthly calling as an apostle. But he was no natural. He even says that he was a lousy public speaker. He was not qualified by worldly standards. But God used him to teach us. Our main calling is not to do something. It is to believe in Christ, the mystery. But how do we know if God calls us to something? How about a parent? Well, it's not feelings that make us a parent. It is being given a child. How about to preach and teach publicly? Christ works today by calling through the congregation, not directly like he did Paul. So Paul does not pick up preaching as a weekend hobby. It is a divine obligation laid on him. In fact, what does he say in our text? He calls himself a prisoner for Christ Jesus on behalf of you Gentiles, on behalf of us. For Jesus did not just come for special people. He offered his life as a ransom for the whole world. This is the mystery of the gospel. Yes, it will be rejected by many as too simple, as naive. But to us, it is the savor of life, our eternal hope. For your spiritual calling is to partake of Christ right now. This is the mystery that the Gentiles are fellow heirs, members of the same body, and partakers of the promise in Jesus Christ through the gospel. This light of forgiveness through the body of Christ is our star in this world. Just like the wise men had to follow a star to get to Jesus, we follow the gospel. And there we find Christ for us. We find the answer. We find the secret of the world that God had planned. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. You may stand for the offertory. Mm -hmm.